Well, folks, Henry Kissinger is dead at the age of 100. Last night, Henry Kissinger died. He was 100 years old. Um, I'd met him very briefly once, and I had interviewed him once. It didn't end up being taped. Um, he is a fascinating character, obviously. Very checkered character. A lot of the decisions he made were extremely cold-eyed, extremely cold-eyed. A lot of people, ranging from Anthony Bourdain to Christopher Hitchens, condemned him as a war criminal for his decision-making during the Nixon administration with regards to, for example, the Indonesian invasion of East Timor or the American intervention on behalf of Pinochet in Chile in 1973 or, or the bombing of Cambodia. By the same token, how you view Kissinger is very much a reflection of how you view international politics as a whole. And the reason that this is broken down into sort of a left-right divide, despite the fact that Kissinger's history was very checkered in terms of left-right decision-making. So, for example, the right doesn't like the fact that Kissinger, quote-unquote, opened China. It was Kissinger who really led to the opening of China. At the time, it was a real politic decision because he saw a gap emerging between China and Russia, and he was attempting to exploit that gap by wooing China away from Russia. Right? That was the goal. The goal was woo China away from Russia, remove them as a source of trade and resources for Russia, and you will end up weakening the Russian regime, which is why the, the trip to China was initiated with Nixon speaking with Mao. So in retrospect, we can say, and I would say, that's a bad mistake. At the time, it's a choice between two bad decisions. And this was the sort of guiding light of Kissinger's foreign policy. So Henry Kissinger, for, for those who don't know much about Kissinger himself, he was a massive celebrity in the 1970s. He was a secretary of state during the Nixon and, and Gerald Ford administrations. According to the Wall Street Journal, no U.S. Secretary of State ever achieved such celebrity while in office as Henry Kissinger. A 1974 Newsweek cover depicted him as Super K, a comic book hero. Time called him the world's most indispensable man. Gallup ranked him America's most admired man. A 1972 Life magazine spread pictured him with a bevy of actresses, including Jill St. John. Yet no former Secretary of State has been more vehemently criticized. Of the many anti-Kissinger books, the most influential was Christopher Hitchens's The Trial of Henry Kissinger, which explicitly accused Kissinger of responsibility for war crimes and crimes against humanity in Indochina, Chile, Argentina, Cyprus, East Timor, and several other places. Although the book mentioned only one other supposed crime scene in Bangladesh and mentioned the Soviet Union only three times. This is Neil Ferguson, who wrote a biography of Henry Kissinger talking about Henry Kissinger. He said, those accusations stuck like mud. Late in life, Kissinger regularly faced protests at his public appearances, yet they are at odds with the historical record. And Ferguson points out that Kissinger was both the White House National Security Advisor and the Secretary of State. His accomplishments included the negotiation of the first Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, the ABM Treaty with the Soviet Union, the opening to China, the ceasefire in the Yom Kippur War in 1973, the end of U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War, for which both he and North Vietnamese counterpart Lee Duk Tho were awarded the 1973 Nobel Peace Prize. But here is the problem. Hey, if you see foreign policy as a family of nations, a lot of good-hearted people out there, they all just want the same thing, but they're having different ways of achieving that, then hardcore foreign policy looks nasty to you. Because the easiest thing is just wash your hands of everything. Oh, if the United States just goes hands off, well, why were we even involved in these places? Why didn't, from the right, what you hear, and I think this critique is correct of Henry Kissinger, is that Henry Kissinger was so focused on the sort of Metternichian balance of power that he forgot that the United States is a global hegemon. And from the left, what you hear of Henry Kissinger is he was engaged in the dirty game of politics, and that meant that the United States was constantly engaged in dirty little wars all around the world we shouldn't have been engaged in. And the reality is somewhere in between. Pure Talk has you covered for the holidays with a free Moto G 5G phone. No gimmicks, no trade in necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gigs of data. You can get all of that for just 35 bucks. You'll get the Moto G 5G phone for free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. The new Moto G 5G boasts a two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Get this exclusive offer. Select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make that switch today. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. You can claim your free Moto G 5G phone with a qualifying plan. Again, that's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Pure Talk is simply smarter wireless. I'm using Pure Talk for like a couple of years at this point. They're great. Their coverage is excellent. 
If it's good enough for me, it's certainly good enough for you as well. Check them out right now. PureTalk.com slash Shapiro. That's PureTalk.com slash Shapiro. The October 15th tax deadline has already passed. I know many of you might be dreading the stress of filing those taxes. I know it's terrible every year. Filing your taxes can be a long, excruciating process, but if you fail to file, you'll start to pile penalties on your tax debt, which is why you need to check out Tax Network USA. The team at Tax Network USA has a track record of success. They've reduced tax debts for numerous clients, totaling over a billion dollars. Whether you're looking at a $10,000 or $1 million tax debt, they can help you with a settlement. It doesn't matter if you haven't filed in a year, five years, even a whole decade. Tax Network USA is equipped to secure the best settlement for you. Their expert attorneys and tax professionals can help resolve all tax cases, no matter how they started. Don't let tax debt control your life any longer. Take the first step toward resolving your tax issues by visiting taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro. Again, when you fall behind on your tax debts, it can eat your life. I mean, like for years, for decades, you need to get that solved today. If you have tax issues, visit taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro and get started resolving that issue today. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro today. The left believes that if a communist regime were to arise in Latin America with the, beh- with the help of the Soviet Union, that's not a bad thing. I think a Marxist regime in Latin America or many Marxist regimes in Latin America, what's the big deal? Why is that a problem? Why does it matter? If Vietnam turns communist, why does it matter if Cambodia and Laos turn communist? Why does it matter if East Timor turns communist? Why does any of that matter? First of all, that demonstrates a complete misreading of how foreign policy works. Foreign policy is a dirty, terrible business in which, if I, as I say, Kissinger had one central foreign policy message. His overriding message was avoid the worst outcome, which means sometimes embracing the second worst outcome. If you read any of his books, this was Kissinger's main thing was avoid the worst outcome This, by the way, was his recommendation in Ukraine. So when it came to Ukraine during this war that is currently ongoing, very early on, he suggested that there should be an off-ramp in Ukraine because everybody knew that Ukraine was not going to take the Donbass or Crimea, in which Ukraine was given security guarantees, did not formally enter NATO, but was given enough armaments to defend itself against a predatory Russian invasion. And Russia was basically given dominion over the territories it was very likely to hold anyway. And this pleased no one in the early days of the war. And it turns out it was rather prescient because what he was attempting to avoid was a straight up face-to-face confrontation between NATO and Russia. That's what he was attempting to avoid. And he knew there there weren't the stones for it in the West. And so realize what is happening on the ground and adjust to it. So when people rip on Kissinger, there are two rips. One is that he misread particular situations. He should have done things differently. All of that's legitimate. The second rip, which is just wrong, is the rip that you don't have to make these sort of considerations when you make American foreign policy. That American foreign policy is either the most sinful foreign policy on planet Earth. Every ill can be ascribed to it. You see this in the critique of Kissinger with regard to Cambodia and Laos, for example. Right? The, the basic idea that is promoted by the left with Cambodia is that Kissinger, when he took over as Secretary of State, in the aftermath of LBJ completely botching the Vietnam War, when he came in, he said, we need to start bombing the communist supply lines in Cambodia. And he authorized mass, huge bombing raids into Cambodia without the approval of Congress. Now, you can talk about whether it needed congressional approval and all the rest, that's fine. But as a foreign policy matter, did bombing Cambodia cause, for example, the left now claims that that caused the rise of Pol Pot in Cambodia, that Khmer Rouge would never have happened if we had not bombed Cambodia? That assumes that there's no such thing as agency in the world. It's a lie. It's not true. The minute the United States got out of Vietnam, Cambodia fell to Pol Pot. So again, it's a bunch of considerations. This is the the overriding message of Kissinger's life. And it's the thing we should take away from it while still quibbling or arguing or strenuously hating many of his foreign policy decisions. Foreign policy is a dangerous and dirty business. It is not possible to engage in foreign policy and keep your hands totally clean. That is not something that you can do because there are, in fact, nefarious powers who hate you and who wish the worst for you and who will have an impact on your life, whether you're talking about them controlling choke points in international trade, as we've talked about on the show, from the Straits of Hormuz to the Straits of Taiwan, or whether you're talking about active military operations against the United States in far-flung places and, yes, indeed, at home. You have to recognize that the world is a complex place that requires complex choices. And very often those choices are the choices of the least bad scenario and having to actually engage with the second worst scenario. And that really is the story of Henry Kissinger's foreign policy. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 